Hello and welcome to Esri Australia's screen share video tutorial on how to clean and format your own data in preparation for importing it into ArcGIS Online. Many teachers and students wish to add their own data using the add layer from file function but experience problems due to formatting issues. This tutorial will walk you through the correct process to cleaning and formatting your data so that it's ready for ArcGIS Online. In order to begin the cleaning and formatting process, you first need data to work with. You're able to access this spreadsheet, training-cleaning data, on our website in close proximity to the link that you clicked to access this video. Once you've saved it to either your desktop or computer, double click it to open it. And as it opens, you will notice that this particular data set is focusing primarily on malaria cases in Africa and it has some additional population data as well. If we work left to right really quickly, we can see our African countries, latitude and longitude, a series of years that contain cases of malaria and a total cases column as well as the population column. To our right, we have our items to be cleaned, which is a little checklist that I added to this spreadsheet to make sure that we cover everything we need to cover in this tutorial so that your data is clean and ready to go into ArcGIS Online. Now, we're going to work through these one at a time. The first being deleting unwanted data or unwanted data columns or rows in this case. For instance, you'll notice that I don't have any data for 2008 and 2009, so there's no point keeping that data and importing these two columns into ArcGIS Online. So what I need to do is I need to highlight those two rows, right click and click delete, and those two rows disappear. Very similar is step number two delete excess rows and columns. While we deleted our unwanted data or lack thereof, we also need to delete excess rows and columns. Now I know that many students and teachers like to name their Excel spreadsheet, give it a title at the top using rows one and two. Now a more appropriate place for naming or titling your data is to either use the headings down the bottom or to use the actual file name as an opportunity to clearly label what your data is. We cannot keep these two rows, or three for that matter, in here because it's going to cause problems with our formatting, which is then going to impact on our ability to import the data into ArcGIS Online. So we need to delete these excess rows. And again, simply drag through to your desired row, right click and hit delete and those excess rows will disappear. Now another step that we always must check when it comes to data is making sure that we have some kind of locational data because in order to map our data in ArcGIS Online, the mapping program, the mapping application needs to be able to recognize some kind of geographic location in order to put the data on the map. Now, we have a couple of examples of locational data in this particular uh, data spreadsheet. You'll notice that we have country names or African countries down the side. The good news for ArcGIS Online is that it recognizes countries, cities, places, addresses. We talked about the idea that it can recognize international locations down to very local locations. So as long as we have some kind of locational data, we should be fine. If you don't have the name of a country, a city, or you want to order an address, you might need to resort to latitude and longitude data. And so I've included that for each African country too, just in case. It's important that you make sure that you title those two columns, latitude and longitude, because when importing it into ArcGIS Online, the application is going to look for these two titles and recognize them as locational data. So we have that and we can give ourselves a pat on the back for having our locational data sorted. In, with regards to this, however, we need to just check, and we're going to skip down to number six while we're here, is the accuracy of our named locations. When we get data from certain websites, they often change or have different names for our countries. 
we, we understand that Dem Rep Congo represents the Democratic Republic of the Congo. However, ArcGIS Online isn't necessarily going to recognize that. So we need to go ahead and change these two. So for the Congo, we literally need to remove Rep and it will recognize Congo for us. And for the Democratic Republic of Congo, we need to rewrite that as such of the Congo, sorry and that will be fine. Now that we've made those two changes, I'm gonna go ahead and turn those fonts back to black so that they're not standing out as an issue anymore. But we need to make sure that we check the accuracy of these named locations because if there's an issue with the spelling, if we've only given Cameroon one O, then ArcGIS Online is not going to recognize that as a valid location. So checking that accuracy of your name locations, making sure they read as expected. The fourth one is to remove our sources and footnotes. I know that when I create my own spreadsheets, I often like to include the URL and the source as to where I got that information from. And I'm not saying don't do that, but I'm saying you need to find a new location for this particular information. For example, a Word document titled Bibliography or References is a more appropriate location for this and you would copy that and paste it somewhere else, for instance in that Word document. And once it's copied and recorded somewhere for later keeping and for later use, you can delete those two rows. And there we go. It also mentioned that we needed to remove our footnotes. Sometimes in our data, the data provider has created footnotes for us and they provide a little bit more information about that particular data set. Now, in this case, I've given an example of a footnote next to the United Republic of Tanzania. ArcGIS Online will also recognize that as simply Tanzania. So if you wished to, we could actually rename this as Tanzania and we would need to make sure we get rid of this footnote down the bottom because that's going to again create issues with our formatting and ArcGIS Online might not necessarily accept it. The next step is to fix our column headers. So you notice that we have titles for each of our data sets or our attribute columns and whilst these would read normally and make sense to us in everyday life, we need to make sure that there are no spaces in our titles because ArcGIS Online does not recognize spaces. So a really easy way to go about fixing that is to put underscores between each of the words or if you don't like underscores you can remove the underscore and have a capital letter for the second word. I personally like to go with underscores and I'm going to go ahead and change any titles, any headings that have more than one word so that they appear with underscores and now ArcGIS Online will be able to read those headers for us. The next step we have done, check accuracy of named locations. We've changed the Congo and the Democratic Republic of the Congo to a suitable name that ArcGIS Online will recognize. The next step is to check the consistency of our zero value data. I often notice that in student work, we tend to represent zeros as zeros and then sometimes we represent them as hyphens, sometimes even forward slashes. Sometimes we don't even put any data in and we might leave it blank like such. Now it's really important that you use the same type of value for every time zero takes place because if there is nothing in a box like this one here, I don't necessarily recognize that as having zero value. I, I might uh, perceive that as there's a gap in the data and you weren't able to obtain that data. So it's really important that our zeros are consistent so that we understand and that our audience understands what value is taking place in those particular cells. So you need to go ahead right now and change each of those hyphens to zero just so that we have a consist consistent zero uh, value across the board and again I'm going to change them to black font 
so I can tick them off as having been completed. Uh, the next job, and we're nearly at the end, is to save this file as a CSV file. Now if I go back to ArcGIS Online really quickly, and I go to Add and Add Layer from File, it actually gives us four options as to what ArcGIS will accept. And you will notice that the normal Excel type of file is not listed here. However, CSV is. And that's what we're going to change our Excel spreadsheet to by going back to it and going to File, Save As, or mine says Save a Copy, yours might say Save As. Go Save a Copy, and this is where we change the file. Excel Workbook, Excel SX, and we need to change that to CSV. So we click on that to bring a drop down menu up, and we look for this option here CSV or Comma Delimited. Okay, and we click that. And I'm going to now change my title to distinguish it from my uncleaned data. And I'm going to go version 2. And I hit save. And now my file type is a CSV, which means it is going to be accepted into ArcGIS Online when I wish to import it. Now the last step we need to do is get rid of this checklist itself because again, this is going to create formatting issues if we leave it there. So again, highlighting the column that you don't need and right-clicking and pressing delete to remove that data or remove that information. And those nine simple steps are often enough to make sure that your data is cleaned and formatted correctly so that when you go to import it into ArcGIS Online, it's accepted and that there's no further issues. In the next video, I will explain the actual process of importing that data and styling that data in a way that allows your data to pop the way you want it to. Thanks for listening.